No hat. Check out the hair. Welcome back, guys. Hopefully, this is a build and catch. You will know from the title. Uh, I don't know yet because we're only fishing next week. These are what I call corn cob blanks. So the corn cobs that I've already uh, done in resin and they're yet to be shaped into any sort of lure. You can see this one was poured in pink and green. Oh yeah, look at that. The <laughs> green stands out great. There's going to be green down one side and pink down the other. Pink, green, pink. Purple and blue. Oh yeah, there's the blue. There's the blue right there on the corner. Purple. Right, so sometimes the multicolor thing doesn't work. This one was yellow and green and they've blended together, but you can kind of see that's a lot more yellow and that's a lot more green. Yeah, you know, it's going to be interesting. This one is balsa. Tasmanian oak. So they're going to be cod divers. This is for today's video. This is a whole lot of something else down there. Look at that, more corn cobs. No way. We're renovating inside, so... I've been moving stuff into the shed just out of the way. Like my shed was clean and usable and now it's all over the shop. So let's move this because I don't want to trip over and die. It's likely. Oh, actually. Right, today's video. That's what we're here for. This is big enough, in my opinion, to be made into two bass lures. For those of you who are viewing me from America, I'm talking about Australian bass. They're a lot different to uh, largemouth bass or smallmouth bass or, or the bass you have over there. Getting a 50 centimeter bass, that's amazing. My personal best is 43, so that big. That That's still a good bass, right? So we're not talking about things that get as big as largemouth bass. So what I wanna do is make two diving lures out of this one corn cob, one for myself, one for Tegan. Next week we're off chasing bass and we want to try and land a bass on a corn cob. So we're gonna jump in now and start making a lot. I've said it before, I'll say a little, a little, a lot. I've said it before, I will say it again. The resin is not centered to the corn cob. The corn cob core is not centered to the corn cob. So there's no point going to the center of that core because we're gonna chew up this side and not this side. So what we're gonna do, under Math Map, find the circle that best suits the corn cob. This is the corn cob around here. Find the Math Map that best suit, the circle that best suits that size, which is something like that. And go north to south. East to west. Right. Just off centre to the core is the centre of the cob. And then put a mark there. And do the same on the other side. made two distinctly different shapes. This one I really want to have the bulging belly underneath and this one I'm going to just carve into there sort of in the, on their bottom and then round the top down a little bit. So uh, this one will be wider, wider. Um, I'll shape the top but I'm going to leave that belly like that real distinct belly underneath it. Um, yeah so both divers uh, we'll take him to the sander and start seeing what we can come up with. They started out different and they're becoming, fast becoming the same lure in a different size. 
I mean, they're a little bit different shape and obviously one is a lot smaller than the other. But the next move is to really shape the sides down on both of them. So they're really going to be very similar. They're very heavy. There's no way they float at the moment. So I need to get that resin off the sides there. So far they're starting to look like lures. So yeah. Little bloody midgy bug things everywhere dying. Summer's coming people with 28.14. Obviously in Australia, we use metric, so I'm talking in mils. All right. So there's the center. And you can see that that's not in the center of that core. And that really throws you when you're working with these lures. So that's to that point. It's definitely the center. So I'm just taking a measurement, locking it, and I'm taking that same measurement to the other side, and then I know that I'm centering everything. Math and map, it's flexible. So what you can do is just line those up like that, bend it around the shape like that. And what that shows me is that when I uh, sanded the belly here, I was actually touch off, which I can see when I sit it down, that it's leaning that way. So that's good. I'll cut this down. I'll be able to reshape that. So I'm going to cut this on the bandsaw. I'm going to bring this corn cob right down to, to close to just the corn cob and the balsa. Um, but it'll be fine. I might even just sand these ones in on this little fella instead of starting up the bandsaw. That's got to take a chunk. So I'll bandsaw that off. This one, I might just sand in there. And then, like that. That's pretty close. Now they look like different lures. Dinner and taller with a big belly. Still got a big belly, but shorter and uh, wider. So we'll see how these two go. They're about the right size. The next thing we're up to is literally clamping these down and just getting some lengths of sandpaper like this and sand it over to round these edges off. I really don't want to take any more uh, with the power, um, any power sanders or anything like that because I don't want to take too much out. You can see we're already almost through the resin completely just into corn job here. Um, we really don't want to risk making this much smaller and then having it break. But I think we're getting to the point where there's enough resin being taken out that we shape this, we're going to end up with lures that float. And what we're also doing is we've eliminated resin pretty much everywhere except for the belly. And that's going to give us our ballast. That's going to make it sit the right way in the water as well as uh, treble hooks uh, off both so I'm very keen to see what we can come up with for now though I'm going to call it a night half past nine I've been renovating all day and I'm going to go inside and relax watch some TV and we'll come back tomorrow and we'll get stuck into these but this really shows you how uncentered the core of a corn cob is. That's pretty close on the back there, but look at the front. Way off. This one here, the front's not too bad, but the back, pretty much at this side and not at that side. And the core's just not straight, the corn cob's not straight, and they're things you have to deal with. But, all in all, I reckon these are going to be cool. Back, as discussed, sand. Sanding time. I was just having a look at a few of my um, few of my bass lures. 
to see what bib you want to go with and these are although they're very similar size to what we actually throw for bass there there's a whole lot more to them um, that's about the same width and length as our favorite bass lure and yet our favorite bass lure has about that much body um, so you know you, you've got a lot more bulk on these but I still think they'll work actually they may even work better having a bit of bulk but it really comes down to the action and more importantly whether we can find bass this time of year um, Australian bass I know there's a lot of you guys from America are a freshwater species that migrate to the brackish salt water for spawning and they do that over winter so what happens is this time of year it's coming out of well we've come out of winter but it's still not summer yet so each year can be different it's really a matter of finding where the bass are they could be anywhere from the salt to their normal ranges up in the fresh and it's really hit and miss whether where we go whether they've got that far yet um we don't know but we're gonna go try because they are a very well-known sport fish uh pound for pound they're one of the best fish that we have to chase and if i get one i'll show you but the tail on them is is huge they're just full of power for their size and because they're not very big you fish from with light gear all the fun so hopefully we can get these lures done they come up all right and we can find some bats a whole lot of gifts in this the downside to these resin and corn cobs is that they're dusty, real dusty. I have hand sand to the crappery. We've got a tall, slender bait and it's working out pretty well. You can see corn all the way around and a good uh, belly of epoxy which is going to act instead of lead without messing up the look of the lure that should really help keep it stable so that's going to have um, fairly rolly action being that shape i would imagine this one is the opposite this is a uh, a chubby lure fairly wide narrows down again we've got the belly and uh, the scale pattern from the corn. I think they both will look really good. This one's probably gonna have a bit of a tighter action. I'm gonna go for the same bib shape. Obviously it will vary where it enters just because they're a different thickness. They're very similar in length. Uh, one's probably about five mil longer. Is a fairly big bib for the size of the lure uh, because I want a steep dive on both of these regardless of what the action does. I really need the bib to pull these lures down. So I'm going to go for, let's hide the lure, that uh, bib, that's shaped bib in proportion to this, um, in proportion to these lures. So I'm going to draw them up now and we'll keep going. I'm going to go for a really similar action. Uh, so I made them. I made them the same length. This one's a bit narrower, it goes into the narrower lure, but that's only just the mounting. It will mean this one's a fraction, a fraction, a fraction weaker. Um, so, but I'm gonna go same toe point, same length, because what I want is this be, uh, this lure to really get down there. So I'm hoping that this shape bib will do that. Um, it'll also be dependent on the angle that I mount it. Now, I think for this size lure, I want about this arc I'm going to go with. So all I do is line the end of that up. And because there's marks all the way around these circles on the math mat, and I've made the center of the bib on the grid paper, I can actually just line the two lines up with the uh with the center grid and then i know that i'm exactly centered and the reason you're doing gray lead is because i think personally i think that was a bit too big so i'm going to go 
and now I've done it in promo because I think this will be the one and if I'm wrong start again just give yourself more than a half circle and that way you've got something to work into put your pen on this point and spin it around until it ties into the circle perfectly bang it's going to be quite a fat bib so there's my bibs just like that ideally you'd go one or 1.5 mil uh lexan uh, because i don't have lexan i'm actually on to two mil in this polycarbonate just to try and give it that little bit more strength um, which means it's actually going to be quite bulky for the size of the lure but that's something i have to deal with because i would rather have a bulkier bib than have uh, the smaller polycarb and have it snap within the first few casts um, i will be having a through wire a bib tow with a wire up into the body and a through wire so i'm not worried about the bib snapping if i have a good fish on and me losing the fish because i that'll be held on by the wire but that's one thing if the bib snaps i'll have a good fish on and i land the fish i've landed the fish if i threw this into something and snapped the bib and it didn't work anymore and hadn't landed any fish then i would be shattered so two mil it is and that was a long winded story and i'm sorry about that that was probably that was just too much so it reminded me of somebody else just cut them out like that Bingo bango bongo. That is the slot that the bib is going to go into. So all I have to do now is drill that out on that angle. Sounds easy. <laughs> oh, yeah, no worries. I've got the bibs ready. I've got them shaped. I've got the slots marked. So tomorrow I will line up exactly what angle I want them, clamp them, use the drill press to drill multiple holes and just clean it out. And then we will epoxy them in. You guys, we're so close to done then. Like, it's literally, uh, sort that out. Sort the wire slot out. Sort the wires out. Glue it all together. Uh, put some eyes in, clear coat. Hope they work. Now, one of my new subscribers gave me this idea. So, if this works... Thank you very much. The center toe point is going to have to be the same idea as with the other corn cobs. So a loop into the center. So I've come through from each end, and the wire goes through. Right there, I reckon. If I drill into this one, what I should do is hit that wire. Yep. So we go like that. That's somewhere out there. Somewhere about where it is. Oh, don't use them. So I've just made uh, opposite loops. I need to drill that out big enough for that to fit in. Put that in there like that and then put this through. And it's got it. Alright, so that's actually going to be a solid little lure. Whether that floats and swims is 
another question yet. Just need to do the exact same thing to this one here. So I'm not going to show you all of that because it's no, no different. We got them both to this. So obviously we're going to need to epoxy the bib and the toe points and stuff in so they don't move and so they're all solid. The epoxy is just sitting in front of the heater. It's still quite cool here at the moment. Obviously epoxy works better when it's warm. I've got both my greens and my yellow out. Seems to have a yellow tinge. I'm going to do my best to match that colour and see how we go from there. It's five minute epoxy which means it'll be about an hour or so before it's fully ready to play with. We actually want to tie our um, toe points. Because we've got it a through wire to the bib, what we can actually do is mark where we want that toe point to be, which is about there. Pop that out and uh, give ourselves a bit of room. All right, now we've got hot epoxy. You've got low battery. I guarantee you go flat right now. Any minute now. Oh, shivers, look at that. That's what you want it like. Hot epoxy. Nice and easy. Couple of drops of green. Laying on their back, the bib angle is actually fairly similar. I've tied the tall one on first. Um, obviously, this is a swim test without any hardware on it. Floats. That's a bloody bonus. Oh, it actually. Man, that actually looks like it's going to swim. So, it floats and it dives steep. Oh, wow. Look at that. Floats as well. Yes, that one works awesome as well. Just a completely different action. Oh, just got the eye folder out. I'm giving these red eyes, and um, just because I think they look good, um, it's still pretty natural. I've given them a sand off screen because I don't think you guys wanted to sit there and just watch me sand these smooth just any lumps and things out of them and i'm pretty happy so it's just a matter now of marking out the eyes and filling those couple of air bubbles with some five minute while we're doing the eyes because that way um it'll dry the eyes will dry and then it's clear coat and then these guys are ready to fit out and fish tomorrow which i'm stoked about because i rushed them out wasn't sure whether i'd get there and pretty happy with the action on both so uh, that's a win We'll go on with that. Just uh, sitting here talking to you guys about it. I reckon right about there. And then... This is the bit I'm worst at, to be honest. Mark on eyes. Not too bad. <laughs> convinced you guys will get together and determine when the battery is going to go flat all the memory cards going to fill up so far you went flat when I was doing the epoxy and being five minute epoxy it's one of those things that I can't run in and do and then the memory card just filled up while I was doing the eyes so I think you saw most of that though so we've got the eyes in both now these both look completely different 
in shape and they have different actions but they should both dive uh, based off the bib um, and in the pool they both pull down pretty hard which is good that's what you want with, with Australian bass you want to get into the back of the structure and get down a little bit um, in their faces I found anyway but not an Aussie Bass Pro as we've been over they're a long way away for us I don't want to get any of you guys hopes up too much either because it's real early season and there's a fair chance we just don't find anything anyway um oh, cheers clear coat time so i'm using a 2k acrylic urethane clear it's an automotive um clear coat it's it's really good actually i found it it gives a really good finish um, you've just got to flame it up because when you stir it, you're always stirring bubbles. In a few hours time, I'm going to come out and probably give it another coat. Look at that. Man, just does such a good job. This stuff's amazing. The reason I do two coats on the corn cob lures is you never really waterproof them. Uh, they're resin. So, you know, the resin is waterproof, but the corn cob is not. And you sand it into it, carve into it and whatever, and you reveal it, so you make it not waterproof. And you don't ever really re-waterproof because you don't want to do anything to upset the look. So I always make sure, I'll give it that little bit extra clear so that we're sort of, making sure we're sealed like that. and real just you don't have to whistle but i find it helps see those bubbles disappear I don't know why. I do not know why. I know why the flame gets rid of the bubbles. But for some reason, if you use a heat gun, you can get rid of the bubbles. But the flame gun gives you this, this amazing shine you don't get if you use a heat gun. And I absolutely have no idea why. And that's it. All right, this all I do now is keep an eye on it and touch up any other ones that need to be done or like any other bubbles that appear and don't overdo it if you actually if you move too slow get too close you'll actually burn the clear coat and it will bubble bubbles off the lure and then you have to strip it and start again and that is not what anybody wants Fantastic. Well, that's an improvement from last night. Oh, God. Mate. Get some bricky and get some up there today. Didn't sleep great. Oh, weather was not amazing, but obviously calmed down. Wow. I 
got a first cast of a corn holly oil of a corn lure oh jeez look at that it's just sucking me around it's actually super quick didn't even get a chance Come on, don't be like that. That's all. The rod tip bounce is definitely doing something down there. Bum, 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 bum. Not a massive action, but it's still pretty good. I'm already over it. I knew it would be. The wind and the current. Just making life hard. Look at how quick I'm going backwards. I might as well be paddling backwards. Because the wind's going the same way. The wind's actually pushing me down. I reckon it's pushing me quicker than the current. <sighs> Frustrating. Oh, that was a hit. What was that? <sighs> There's all sorts of things in these waters, so I don't know whether it's necessarily a bass, but I'm hoping it's a bass. I'm gonna go back and see, see if I can get him to come back or one of them to come back or whatever. Just real slow rolling through there. I got about halfway back. That was a pretty solid hit, but missed the hook. nothing that time. You may have noticed I'm on a different lake. Oh, I'm on a lake. This is Lake Nellicudi, and I've come here to chase showers. Where we are here is a little flat bay. We've just come under the bridge. It's really, really windy and um, pretty choppy out there. So I've come in here for a bit of shelter and this time of year, coming into spring, the yellows are starting to come up on the flats anyway, grassy edges and the flat areas to um to ball up and spawn so hopefully through these shallows here we might be able to find a few if not we'll get back out in the lake and we'll drift down that way so starting with the corn cob lure i had on yesterday with some yabby scent on it it's gonna start flicking in towards the edges around here water's pretty dirty but we'll just see if we can find something Getting back out in the main lake, if we don't find anything in here, is going to be hard work. Look, this has got some shoulder. <laughs> Thank you. 
I can see this being a donut, like no fish. Yep. What is that? Oh no. It's a tiny little Murray cod. <laughs> oh no. We finally caught one. Not the target species at all. Not a very big fish at that. Beautiful little fella, guys. I'm not going to show you too much. He's got to go back. Hey, buddy. Off he goes. Nice little Murray cod. Out of season cod, but it's a fish. It's a fish. It's a fish on the board. The fish on the corn cob lure. That's uh, that's what we wanted to say. So, I built the lures for bass. I then decided after I couldn't get any bass to go chase yellow belly, and I then caught a cod on a lure on the one of the lures. So, catches cod, catches fish, um, and I'm sure it will catch shallows. Today was exceptionally hard fishing. Windy as, um, no sounder, so blind fishing, and limited to where I could blind fish because of the wind. It's not over, this video is over, uh, but I will be taking the corn cob lures, those little ones, out again, and we will be getting some fish. So, thank you very much for watching, guys. I really appreciate, well, we, Tegan and I both really appreciate it. It really means a lot to us that you come along on our adventures. Hope you enjoyed it. Now, uh, if you did, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed already, why not consider doing so below? Um, leave a comment. We'd love hearing from you and share it around if you want to. All of that's up to you guys. Do what, do what you want. If you don't want to do any of that, don't worry about it. But guys, yeah, got a fish on the lure. Uh, happy with that. Actually really happy with that. And, um, There'll be more. We'll be we'll be doing more fishing with these lures, and there is still more corn cob uh, lures to come. And I pulled over today and picked up something off the ground, which I'll be using to make lures very very shortly as well. Uh, that's a subscriber idea, and yeah, we're going to do that. So you may have an idea of what that is. You may not, but more crazy lure builds coming we've got a few coming up so guys uh yeah i'm rambling on so thank you very much hope you enjoyed all of that and uh don't forget to fish every opportunity